The Bee Tree by Patricia Polacco The Bee Tree I'm tired of reading, Grandpa, Mary Ellen sighed. I'd rather be outdoors running and playing. So you don't feel like reading, eh? Feel like running, do you? Then I expect this is just the right time to find a bee tree, he said, taking down a jar and putting on his lucky hat. What's a bee tree, Grandpa? Mary Ellen asked. Well, it's where the bees make their home. It's where they keep the honey, the sweetest in the land. Grandpa chirped excitedly. But we already have honey, Grandpa, Mary Ellen said. Ah, but not honey like this, her grandpa answered with a wink. Mary Ellen and her grandpa put on their coats and went outdoors. They walked down past the hollyhocks to the garden and found bees gathering pollen from the flowers. Her grandpa carefully trapped some in the glass jar, making sure not to hurt them. When he was sure that he had enough, he smiled and leaned close to Mary Ellen. They'll take the pollen back to the hive to make it into honey and will be right behind them. Then he slowly loosened the lid of the jar and let one single bee escape. It stayed on the mouth of the jar for a moment, flew straight up, then buzzed toward the cornfield. Quick, now, run, Grandpa called out as he began to chase the bee. Just then, Mrs. Govlock from down the creek way was walking baby Sylvester in his carriage. Mary Ellen and her grandpa ran by them. We're off to find a bee tree today, grandpa shouted. I haven't done that since I was a girl, Miss Govlock said excitedly. May I come too? Grandpa motioned her to follow, and the three of them were off and running. Baby Sylvester laughed out loud as his carriage bumped and bounced through the rows of corn. Honk! went a goose as it waddled after them. As they came from the cornfield and crossed Dietz Junction, Einar Tundervold came around the bend on his squeaky old bike. Where are where are you all going in such a hurry, he asked. A bee tree, Mary Ellen puffed as the foursome scurried by. Chasing a bee to its tree, this I would like to do also, he said, as he stood up and pedaled faster. The wheels of his bike went twiddle, twiddle, squeak. Their boots slapped the ground, the buggy pitched and swayed, and the goose honked as they ran after that bee. The bee swooped down, stopped, held in midair, then circled past them and headed straight for the St. Joe River. Olaf Lundhagen, while strolling on the nearby shore with the charming Herman sisters Petra and Dorma, looked up and noticed the commotion coming toward them. Where are you all going? he called out. To a bee tree. We are going, Einar Tundervold puffed as he pedaled by. Can we come too? the two lovely ladies pleaded. Fast, you'll have to run, Einar said. We don't care, let's go, the three shouted as they raced after him. Slap, pump, honk, twiddle, twiddle, squeak, bump. They all went as they sped down the road after that bee.
Klondike. Bertha Fitchworth, just back from an expedition in the Yukon, had car trouble next to the road. She looked up just in time to see everybody running by. You say you're after a bee tree? She shrieked. Zounds, that won't be easy, but Eureka, what an adventure! She sprinted along behind them. The bee dipped and soared as it made its way out of sight. But Grandpa carefully let another out, and the chase was on again. The noisy merry bunch galloped up over Bird Talk Fellow Ridge, only to run smack dab into fiduciary long drops herd of goats. The goats bleated and bucked as the people clamored through them. What ho! fiduciary called out. You're gonna scare my goats! A bee tree, a voice called back. With that, fiduciary tooted his flute, and he and his flock joined the chase. Bounding bills, this will be great, he said on a dead run. Three traveling musicians looked up just in time to see a thundering stampede of goats, buggies, people, and bikes coming straight for them. Why are they all running, Pa? One of the boys asked his father. We're after that bee, Grandpa said, pointing at the small dot in the sky. It's leading us to a bee tree, Mary Ellen wailed as he streaked by them. Come on along, Klondike, Bertha chortled as she huffed past. Slap, bump, bleat, honk, twitter, twill, squeak, fump. They went as they ran. Hoofs clattered. Rows of corn were parted. Nothing really mattered but chasing that to be. They ran through Griner's Bluff and into Bishop's Meadow, around Dead Men's Tree, and then to Bird Talk Hollow. As they ran down the hollow, the bee took blinding speed and disappeared from their sight. They all stopped to catch their breath just in front of Dunk's wood. Grandpa handed the jar with the last bee in it to Mary Ellen, and she let it out. Sure enough, it flew straight and low right into Dunk's wood. It's the bee tree, Grandpa whispered. That's where the honey will be, but we'll need plenty of smoke. Everyone set about to build a smoke fire from twigs and damp leaves. When the smoke had quieted the bees, Grandpa balanced on Einer's bicycle and reached into the tree. As he pulled out small pieces of honeycomb, he dropped them into some of Baby Sylvester's spare clean diapers that Klondike Bertha was holding. Mary Ellen tied them into neat little bundles, and Mr. Lundhagen put them into the baby carriage. The musicians played merrily as the Herman sisters danced. Grandpa invited everyone back to the house for baking powder, biscuits, fresh brew, tea, and, of course, the honey. There was music, dancing, tall tales, and raucous laughter as they all buzzed about the sweet adventure of that day. Grandpa took Mary Ellen inside, away from the crowd. Now, child, I am going to show you what my father showed me and his father before him. He said quietly, he spooned the honey onto the cover of one of her books. Taste, he said, almost in a whisper, 
Mary Ellen savored the honey on her book. There is such sweetness inside of that book, too, he said thoughtfully. Such things, adventure, knowledge, and wisdom. But these things do not come easily. You have to pursue them, just like we ran after the bees to find their tree. So you must also chase the these things through the pages of a book. Then he smiled and hugged her. From that day on, Mary Ellen never again complained about her reading. She found it to be every bit as exciting as a wild chase through the Michigan countryside and as sweet as the honey from a bee tree. The Bee Tree